Dale Comstock, and uh, this segment is going to be about knife fighting. I'm actually calling you from the back of my car, driving uh, in Jakarta, in Indonesia, where I currently reside. I talk a lot about knife fighting, carrying a knife, especially in a survival situation, whether you're um, in a wilderness survival situation or whether you're traveling abroad. Knives are great, uh, great instruments for a lot of reasons. Obviously, you can use them for cutting things, cutting rope, cutting into devices. Um, I carry it ma mainly for self-defense in lieu of carrying a gun if I don't have or can't carry a gun, which I cannot do here in Indonesia. In fact, um, the population is pretty much unarmed. However, the bad guys do have the guns. And unfortunately, my knife is not going to stand up to a gun unless I'm in close range or the, sh the gunner or shooter makes a mistake. Anywho, my concern is fighting with another guy that has, or other guys that have knives. And uh, my, my intent is not to fight, uh, my intent is to escape. In fact, that leads me to the first ten of, tenet of knife fighting, which is, don't get a knife fight. Second tenet, run away to live and fight another day. Like speaking, um, anytime there's a, uh, a stabbing or a knife fight, there's always at least two sets of blood. Blood from the victim, and blood from the assailant. And why is that? Well, usually the assailant gets cut with his own knife or the victim usually did inflict some kind of damage where he draws blood from the opposition. So, you know, there's always two sets of blood. Invariably, everybody gets cut in a knife fight. You know, it's not a question of, you know, are you gonna cut? It's, you are gonna get, get cut. It's just a matter of how bad you're gonna get cut. Now, what I'm gonna talk a little bit about is knife self-defense. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of martial arts systems out there, the, you know, the uh, Filipino martial arts, things like that, that emphasize knife fighting and no dis disrespect to those systems. Um, but to be honest for, with you, for the average person, it's not very practical. It takes a long time to learn and master those skills. And, um, you know, there's, you know, unless you have hours and hours to dedicate to knife fighting, which most people don't, um, it's probably not going to have any value to it. So I try to keep it my knife fighting techniques as simple as I can. And what I emphasize is um, gross motor skills and really the um, practical use of the knife in self-defense. And it's really not to overcome an adversary, more so it's designed and the intent is to escape. Because um, if you try, the longer you stay on the X, the longer you stay in de decisive engaged, uh, the better chance you're going to get mortally stabbed and, and get killed. So, um, you know, statistically, as I said, you know, it just, uh, it's not a matter of going to get cut, it's just how bad you're going to get cut. And the longer you stand there, the chances are you're going to get cut pretty good. So what I do, um, what I teach is basically a system where you take the knife, and this supposes a lot of systems that are out there, and putting the, you put the knife in your strong side hand and you use your left side hand kind of as a shield. And the way you do it is you position your left hand so that the palm is facing towards your face, your arms are out at a 45 degree angle, and basically you're giving, um, you're exposing your forearm to any potential um, stabs from the knife. And, uh, and you're not just putting it out there as a shield to be repeatedly stabbed, you're, you're basically putting it out there to um, stop that one that one thrust that comes in you weren't prepared for, but also give you an opportunity to uh, to counter right away with either a strike or a parry um, or, or a block or something else. Um, the right hand, or the strong hand, in my case it's right handed, um, that's where I'm going to keep my knife as demonstrated. The other thing is, um, you could argue that, uh, well, I can't reach as far with my, my uh, thrusting hand, my right hand, if it's to the rear. In, and that's really not true. I do fight out of a boxer stance, and the reality is if I use proper foot movement, which doesn't take a lot of practice, um, I can actually reach farther with my strong hand um, to my rear um, than I can with my lead hand out to the front, as demonstrated. So again, what this does is it keeps my weapon in reserve, um, keeps it away from the bad guy so he can't grab it, can't stab me in my, in my knife hand, and I'm using my other hand, my my non-fighting -fighting hand, or um, non-offensive hand as a guard, basically, to, to allow me to basically to parry, to block, and to close the gap, and counter with a strike or, or a thrust from my knife. And again, the idea is not to become decisive engaged and overcome my adversary. If I do, good, but really my goal is to 
you know, at least stab him or inflict him or scare him enough that uh, I basically stopped the attack and allowed myself to uh, to move to to a uh, a secure area or give myself a tactical advantage.